We're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to go, um, we're gonna, next two speakers, uh, we're going to dive into payments, the changing face of in-store transactions, but also e-commerce and making e-commerce and mobile commerce more frictionless. So I'm happy to bring out Jennifer Bailey, who runs Apple Pay at Apple. Jennifer. Good to see you. Hey, Jason. Is this working? Can you hear me? Let's see. Are we on? Thumbs can, up. Can, can you hear, hear me? Jennifer? There we go. There we go. Okay, we're good. Um, so my, I embarrass my wife a lot. I mean, that's, that's like blanket statement, period. <laughs> but specifically, we, we, you know, when we go into stores and, you know, we get to the cash register and I'm, the, I'm like, oh, no, no, I got it. I got it. And I'm not just being like a nice husband or like want the points on my card and not her card, but I'm a nerd who wants to pay with my phone. I happen to have an iPhone, so I pay with the Apple Pay. Um, and then I look around and I'm like, is anyone else doing this? And this is like strictly anecdotal, which journalists love to do. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, two years in, I feel like I still, I don't feel the momentum. You're probably going to say I'm, I'm totally wrong, but wh where you are, are you? Totally wrong. Where, where are you? Where are you two years in 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 adoption in store of Apple Pay? Yeah. Um, so we're really happy with the momentum of Apple Pay. Uh, in the last two years, you know, uh, if, if we look at just some of the stats that we've announced, we have tens of millions of customers on Apple Pay. We grew transactions. I think we announced in September 500% year over year. Uh, we can add to that tonight that our monthly average user transaction is growing. Um, we're continuing That's to That's better than not growing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's growing well, I okay. should say. Okay. Uh, we're, we're still adding millions of customers a month. Uh, and actually daily, the customers- Daily users? Ac or? Actually the customers that we've had longest on Apple Pay uh, use it the most. Um, when we look at the US acceptance, so, th so that's all great. When we look at the US acceptance footprint, you know, when we started Apple Pay, it was about three to four percent of retailers accepting contactless payments, which was NFC. Um, we now have 35 percent, four million locations, it's a new number. Um, to give you some context, so we've done that in two years, to give you some context, in the UK, it took them s seven years to get to 30 percent penetration. So we've had really big trajectory there. Part, um, part of that is riding is, is the timing of your launch, right? Which coincided with the move to EMV in the US and chip cards and a lot of these same equipment can be used to accept absolutely. Contact, contactless, right? Right, and-, and Which was strategic or <laughs> luck or combination? Of course it was strategic. Of course, <laughs> yeah. Um, EMV has been both positive, I, I tell you it's just like positive and negative for EMV. Um, first on the positive side, uh, it, has greatly increased people upgrading their hardware, particularly small businesses. You know, it's an, it's an easy sell to do that. Secondly, um, if many of you have used of EMV, it's not a great customer experience. You know, it's dip, wait. Yeah, so this is the, ch this wait. is like, well, if the first question is, do I swipe, do, or right, do I put? Right, first, once you figure out that you have to actually dip it in the machine, then you wait a while, you wait a while, and then it goes, eh, eh, eh. And which is a good sound, I've learned. That means take your <laughs> card yeah. out, you paid, which. Yeah, I think we, yeah. We think the, indus the, the industry could do a better customer experience there. But the benefit to Apple Pay is that obviously our experience is much better and it's much faster. So a lot of retailers who are really focused on throughput, um, everyday things like you know Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, uh, quick service restaurants, um, use Apple Pay and have implemented Apple Pay very quickly because the, the throughput impl implications of it is, is great. So again, we've gone from 4 to 35 percent. We think in 2017 we'll have two-thirds of the top 100 retailers accepting Apple Pay in the U.S. Um, we're happy uh, to announce that Gap, as, as a leading uh, apparel retailer, will be accepting Apple Pay. Uh, this next year, uh, along with some other uh, great bands who are already J. Crew, Lululemon, DSW, et cetera. So we're making fantastic progress. So when I think about um, adoption, Apple Pay in store, and I think about what could um, move consumers who maybe aren't a payment nerd like I am to want to pay with their phone, um, you mentioned the rollout of chip cards and how it's still confusing. Do you swipe? Do you put it in? How many seconds does it take? I was waiting for some type of like brilliant marketing minds from Apple to jump on that and like push out that messaging as, 
you know, chip cards suck, why don't you pay with your phone? And <laughs> I haven't seen that, which is, so what, why is that? I have, I have my assumptions, but I'll let you answer first. Well, um, Apple Pay is based on all the par partners in the payment industry, <laughs> if ah. you've noticed that. Yes. Um, our biggest so partners are banks. Um, so you can't piss them off too much, like well, on national TV. And I don't think it's, look, we want to we wanna encourage Apple Pay uh, usage based on the benefits of Apple Pay, right? It's super easy, it's super fast, it's secure, and it's the private way to, private way to pay. Uh, and we think that's great reason, and we've seen a lot of customer uptake. We see incredibly high customer satisfaction rate, 97%. Uh, and I said, we see a lot of repeat usage. And so um, knocking EMV is not nece necessarily the way to go. I think the way to go is to continue to increase acceptance and also uh, work with great partners. I mean, we do uh, a lot of um, marketing in terms of promotions and offers. We do it through partners. So, uh, so not a, not an Apple Pay loyalty program like correct. something like Samsung just announced a Samsung Pay loyalty, which I assume they're subsidizing. You've gone in a different direction. Completely different. We work with our partners. So if you look at uh, some of the offers out there, Bank of America was giving an you know if you use Apple Pay, we'll donate to Red.org on World AIDS Day. Uh, Chase is doing a promotion right now with a eTix app in New, in New York where when you commute on the train you can get $30 off your ticket if you use Apple Pay. Uh, American Airlines and City, 10 times points when you use Apple Pay. So our strategy is to, again to really work with retailers and banks to do offers and, and that's important for a couple reasons. First is because we think the offers can be contextual. If you're an American Airlines customer, 10 times points on Apple Pay is a great offer. Um, the, other, the other key reason is that you know Apple Pay was really designed to be private and to do uh, great offers, you need transactional data. We don't have that. Private, private meaning you do, we don't see you don't the transaction. I, I don't, I jump in I don't know what you bought, where yeah. you bought it, or how much you paid for it. Apple doesn't know that. We don't get that on our servers. Uh, we don't have access to it. And so, um, so it wouldn't make sense. It would be difficult for us to do direct offers. And so we really leverage the banks and our retail partners to do that. So part of the promise I've seen of digital payments or, or using your phone. Um, you know, to, to replace something in my wallet is when, at the point in which I can replace my entire wallet. Right. So I'm sure you, I'm sure you all think a lot about things like the digitization of identification cards, for example, driver's licenses. Um, we can get into transit as well, but can you give me a sense of, let's talk in the U.S. Do you, I mean, do you see a time in the next five to ten years where I'm using my phone as something on my phone as identification that when I get to TSA, for example, I'm not just showing my boarding pass and then my ID, but I'm showing everything on a phone. Yeah, certain, certainly as we said, you know, from the beginning of Apple Pay, our goal is to replace the wallet. Uh, what we've done there is loyalty. So we have a loyalty um, program where you can pass your loyalty credential. You can create a pass. Uh, as a as a retailer and pass that over NFC, so you, you know with Apple Pay, uh, Walgreens has deployed it, Kohl's has deployed it, uh, Blackhawk just announced actually as well that they will be enabling their merchants to have customers be able to add their gift cards into Apple Pay so that you'll be able to support Apple Pay uh, from a gift card perspective as well. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts has gift cards and Apple Pay. So uh, we're starting to do many more things and we can talk about transit as well. Uh, but um, that's w we're continuing down that path. I think it's a good long journey. So uh, does that mean I, the that wallet. means my, my vision of replacing my, my driver's license way, way off, or is that just something you guys, you have enough in front of you, you're not thinking about it? Uh, I think we're thinking about all of it. Everything in your wallet we're thinking about. Okay, so you're, and you're working on it, but you're not gonna talk about it on stage. Talk about it on stage. <laughs> Let's talk about transit. Okay, no, I mean, yeah, I, so I'm based in New York. I get out here as much as I can. Um, you know, I am now a professional swiper with the, M, with the MTA uh, Metro card, but, um, there could be something better. I know New York City has has said they're not they're going to have contactless sometime around 2020. Um, 
are you are you going to cities and and trying to push transit authorities or what's what's the strategy around transit rollout? Yeah. So first, um, let's talk about what we've done in transit so far. So uh, when we uh, launched Apple Pay in the UK, we work with the transport uh, for London. So you can do it on the tube there or on the buses. Uh, and we just launched, when we launched in Japan, we had a huge launch in Japan, and we uh, worked with the large, largest transit operator in the world, um, JR East. They do 23 billion transit rides a year, uh, and we did a solution with them where you can have a Suica card, which is their stored value uh, closed loop card, to ride the transit. Uh, it's a fantastic um, solution. So you're ta you're tapping at the trans tapping metro in, gates or something. Tapping like. in, uh, and the performance characteristic, and this is one of the really interesting things about our solution, uh, they move 60 people through the gates per minute, a single gate, 60 people. So it's basically every second. So we had to uh, be able to do Apple Pay in that performance characteristics where you're really just tapping and paying and walking through. Uh, so it's been super successful. Just, you know, we just announced um, about a month ago, we already have a million customers uh, in, in Japan with Apple Pay enabled. Our transit customers are three times more active in the first week than we see in a normal uh, general sort of credit and debit well, that's solution. The, that's, that's part of the goal of transit, right? It's something, Absolutely. You, it's every something day. you do every day. It's every day. So um, you can expect us to do more in transit. Okay. Um, let's sh shift gears. I think um, to people for people who aren't in the business, sometimes they hear Apple Pay and they may just think tap and pay. But I think for probably a lot of people in the room, I know a lot of people I talk to on my beat, um, what you're doing, both Apple Pay as in-app uh, payment method, as well as recently um, a web payment method on s the Safari browser, um, has a lot of people has a lot of people excited. So, uh, you know, it seems like the bigger to me, it seems like the bigger opportunity, the real use case that makes sense is replacing having to type in your credit card in an app or. Um, on a website compared to the in-store use case. Do you do you look at it that way, and do you resources inside? <laughs> no, okay. Jason well, with for, another, yeah. For sure, for sure um, you know, online, mobile, e-commerce um, is, a, is a great area for us. We were super excited to launch web support. Uh, we have um, hundreds of thousands of sites supporting Apple Pay. Some great retailers um, are supporting Apple Pay on the web. Um, and so we've seen a lot of early traction there. I think it's also really un important to understand that when we look at transactions, if you look at where transaction growth is, and I think um, he was saying earlier, you know, mobile is huge. Uh, and if you look at where uh, online and offline, you know, things like ride sharing services, things like order ahead, things like ticketing, things like digital goods, that's a massive amount of uh, transaction growth. And if you, if you just think about, step up and think about Uber for a minute, they're doing billions of rides per year. Uh, and you compare that from a transaction volume per perspective to a traditional retailer, uh, even the lar many of the largest in the US don't make that many transactions. So it's important to do both in store as well as uh, be uh, covering things like mobile and, uh, and an app. Um, so I would say both are important. Um, but what I would say in store that's important as well as a retailer, if you think about it, is um, Particularly with you, you know, you, you you see what Amazon announced yesterday, right? We can enable retailers for people who didn't see. I'm I'm assuming yes, you're please. talking about Amazon a, a physical yeah. store where you can pick an item off a shelf, walk out, and without standing in line or paying, right. and then it will be automatically uh, charged to your Amazon account. Exactly. Yeah. So when we look at in store evolving. Right, being able to use what you would call the mobile rails or the in-app rails to complete transactions is something that we can enable for retailers using Apple Pay. I thought you were going to announce an Amazon partnership, and my head <laughs> was going to just explode <laughs> off the stage. Um, but why did it, so? So you started when when you first launched two years ago. You started with in-store Apple Pay and also in-app. And I think part of the thinking around starting with in-app versus browser was you control the the app experience on iPhones, and so that's a good, that's a good place to start. Um, why did it take 
why didn't you, you launch Browser at the same time? And, and what did you learn in the two years between launching in-app and Browser yep. that, um, yeah. that has helped with the launch? Good question. Um, so when we launched in app, um, a lot of that was really driven by the fact that our uh, the way Apple Pay works today uh, requires a secure element on our devices. That's where we store uh, the tokenized uh, payment credential, and it's a very you know absolutely sort of so the it's most a secure piece of way. Hardware. It's a piece of hardware that sits on your uh, iPhone or on your watch or on your iPad. Um, and so when we moved to mobile, we had to, I mean desktop basically, we had to figure out a way to support Macs that didn't have secure elements. So the way we do that, as, you'll see, as you probably saw from our announcement in September, is that we um, pair basically with an iPhone or an Apple Watch to do the authentication. So if you want to pay on a, Mac, on a Mac that doesn't have a secure element through Apple Pay, you have to also have an iPhone. That's right, or an Apple Watch or an Apple Watch, and you prove you are who you say you right. are. Right, you do, t you again, biometric touch ID, boom, it sinks and it's off. Um, and so what we've learned, it's been great. Uh, when we launched an app, the what, what we see and what our partners tell us is we see two times more people completing a transaction, so two times the conversion rate. Um, we are seeing that consistently uh, as well uh, in web. So our partners are telling us um, it's you know 60% faster to check out. It's two times the conversion rate on on web as well as on in app. Uh, and so we're seeing great uptake from um, our merchant partners uh, rushing to implement Apple Pay. Um, zoom out for a second. And what what is the reason Apple is in this space to begin with? So um, I don't know if you've ever confirmed the little sliver of transaction. Uh, haven't. Haven't. Okay. So. You, Apple takes a cut, a very tiny cut allegedly. of allegedly, allegedly, reportedly, <laughs> according to journalists who know their shit, um, uh, cut of transactions. Um, and you know, I've seen some estimates from some smart people on what kind of revenue that's driving to this day. I won't even mention a number because it is speculation, not fact. Um, but but right now, it's fair to say when you look at Apple that revenue from Apple Pay is you know not not moving any needles. So. What is the long-term goal of Apple Pay? Is it selling more iPhones? What is it? Yeah, so when we look at um, our services business, right, we want to create um, services that people use every day uh, using their hardware devices uh, that can help people's lives, simplify them, make them easier, make them more enjoyable. Uh, and and we, when we looked at the wallet, when we looked at payments, you know, it's something you do every day. Uh, it's something that we felt could we, we could make more secure, we could make it simpler, uh, we could make it more ubiquitous, and, and that's why we're doing it. I mean, we think it's a great area. We're getting into these uh, other areas like transit that are related, which again, way better experience using your um, iPhone to commute uh, than a plastic car that you may forget or doesn't tell you the total value uh, on it, and so that's, that's why we're uh, doing this. Do you believe that people are, are are choosing to, to buy an Apple device over another device um, because of Apple Pay? I hope so. Hope so. So to your or is it or is it more likely one of one of many reasons? We offer we offer you know the iPhone is such an incredible product uh, and it's um, got so many great features. Um, you know we're one of many great features. How do you think to, um, so we talked a little bit up about adoption in store and the percentage of retailers that accept Apple Pay growing, I think you said from single digits to 35%. Um, what are you doing behind the scenes to try to push and move the needle on the remaining 65% and maybe maybe some smaller merchants who don't, who don't see the need right now? I think it goes to, um, Working with retailers and helping them understand just the basic value proposition, which is increased throughput. It's more secure for them as well. They're not getting that uh, credit card number, which could then be breached in their systems. Um, it's getting them to understand the value of our loyalty program uh, and how they can increase that. It's getting them to change the in-store experience. I mean, we have great partners. Uh, Panera is one who's really changed their in-store experience based on a mobile payment model with Apple Pay. How so? 
you can order ahead, uh, can, you know, significant 25% of their transactions uh, in their app or Apple Pay for order ahead. You can sit down now and order at the table. Uh, when you do that, you just go w walk up to the counter and pick it up. So it's a great, you know, it's a great way. Starbucks is doing a order ahead with Apple Pay. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts is doing order ahead. So there's a lot of new ways to use payments and changing the customer experience, reducing the lines that you have, you know, in your stores. Uh, as well, and so I think from a, again from a retailing perspective, whether you're offline or you're online, getting people through checkout in a more secure, seamless fashion is a huge value add. Okay, one more question for me, and then we'll turn it over to the audience. Um, right now, when you want to use Apple Pay or a merchant wants to um, uh, implement Apple Pay for the browser, um, it's only it's only available on on Safari browser, which makes sense for a lot of reasons. Um, should we expect that you would move into other browsers for Apple Pay? What, I, what I'll say is that generally, we look at Apple Pay, we want to have uh, as many uh, ways to have people use it from a transactional perspective, whether that's in transit, whether that's in loyalty, whether that's on the web, whether that's uh, in app. So broadly, I would say we are always looking at um, additional. I can't comment specifically on that. I was going to say that's the closest broadly. I thought I would get to an Apple executive yeah. talking about future plans. So I'm going to take that as a win. Um, do, we have, do we have any questions from the audience? I'm sure we must. Um, uh, we have a reporter I know right here. Um, why don't you stand up, tell us who sure. you are. Hi, uh, I'm Lauren Good from The Verge. Um, so I know that security is of the utmost concern for Apple, and you mentioned that was part of your reasoning in the gap between the in-app launch and the browser launch. But as Apple Pay looks to be more and more, and as you explore all the things that are happening in the wallet, um, how much of a concern is battery life if people to start to use their phones or their wristwatches to be everything or get them into everything? Yeah. One of the great things about um, Apple is the way we integrate hardware, software, and services. So when we're adding uh, hardware capabilities like the secure element or we're uh, adding cap capabilities like the NFC radio, our teams work together uh, to make sure that the you know, the, the battery or the power usage is absolutely the most efficient. And, and um, honestly, doing a transaction today uh, using NFC is very, very low power. I'm assuming... So if I'm looking to pay, if I'm looking to get into transit or maybe some, and wow, that would really suck if I'm about to tap at Metro Stop and then I'm late to work, Kara Swisher fi fires me. It's like a really bad chain and I blame Apple. It's like I left my homework at home. I, yes. I, I forgot to charge my phone. Yeah. Um, uh, what I would say is that again, as we, as, as you look at the, the technology evolution, not only is our power management and power um, efficiency getting better, but our um, battery technology gets better as well. So it's it's continuing to evolve all those technologies together to be able to handle the increased demands and the increased usage, uh, whether it's on an iPhone or on an Apple Watch. Um, we have one in the middle of the room over here. Hi, my name's Daniel Cohen. I'm from Docomo Digi uh, Digital. I have two questions. Um, one is very specific to me, so I'll come to that one second. Uh, the first question is, are you thinking about um, uh, releasing Apple Pay from just being backed by credit cards so that there are other kind of payment methods people can use uh, that Apple Pay acts as the authentication method for? Such so, a, for example, PayPal or being able to put charges directly onto your mobile phone bill or whatever so that you don't have to have a credit card to use Apple Pay. And the second question is, um, I live in New York. My number one use case for Apple Pay has been in yellow taxi cabs. And recently, it seems more and more of them are not accepting Apple Pay. Uh, do you, is that something that is just me being personally targeted? Or is this uh, yeah. Yeah. something you could look into for me, please? Let me take that one first, and then we'll go back to your other one. Um, actually, New York taxi cabs, uh, uh, up, had a uh, system transition uh, and uh, had a issue uh, with 
the support of Apple Pay. So it's been turned back on and is working fine now. So you might have experienced some outages, but it's all fixed. So it wasn't some negotiating? No, tactic. no, no. Okay. No, actually, I, I was in New York a little while ago and I actually used it multiple times. Um, and then your other question was about other payment types. So today, if you, if you think about it, Apple Pay supports credit debit. We support uh, transit cards. We support loyalty. Uh, and we're supporting gift cards and stored value. Uh, actually, when uh, Jack is up next, he will have some interesting news about some additional ways uh, we will be supporting Apple Pay um, with Square in, in, in their cash uh, product. You're not supposed to work together like that yeah. behind this. OK. We'll take one more question. Um, we got one in the back. Thanks. Uh, Scott Harkey with Level. Um, you know, one of the great things about Apple Pay when it first came out is it finally ended the debate in the industry about whether NFC was going to be the method for payment at point of sale. Uh, but now we see retailers and banks both building mobile wallet products using QR codes. And, and in part, when you talk to them, it's because they want to create a customized experience, but they can't on an iPhone. Uh, why have you guys decided to keep that closed and not open that up in a secure way so others can build experiences on top of that? Yeah, so let me let me uh, talk about two things. One is um, how we look about how we think about QR codes, um, and it's great because we talked about some of the stuff earlier, which is when you think about replacing the wallet, um, we're looking across all these different uh, areas. You know, we're looking at stored value uh, and gift cards. Uh, we're looking at, you know, some other things that Jason mentioned. You know, we're looking at transit. And so when you think about, as an example, the performance requirement for transit and the speed, there's no way you could ever do that with a QR code. And so we feel we want to have a really consistent experience because that's the way consumers will find it simplest to habituate. Every time they get near, you know, this, this, I'm going to tap. I'm going to tap here. I'm going to tap here. So we see, we see a world of tapping um, as, as our goal. Um, when you talk about the issues around NFC, uh, there are a bunch of um, security issues, and there's also customer experience issues with quote unquote, you know, opening up NFC. Um, and in fact, what we've seen on the Android platform is that there are very few of those. Uh, what we would, what we, if you're a you know payment nerd, HCE wallet. Uh, that are, very few of them are very successful, and one of the reasons is because they actually can't get the same customer experience, even with quote unquote open access, as simple as tapping, you know, touch ID and tapping Apple Pay. Um, so the other problem with NFC is if you open it up, it can only be paired to an app at one time. And so it would break essentially all the other functionality that we have in Wallet, whether it's transit, gift cards, or others. So there are a lot of complex issues with um, how the security model works with Apple Pay as well as the customer experience. So we're going to end it on that awesome, uh, slightly geeky response. Yes. So <laughs> Jennifer, thank you very much.